So, you just got your Project Zomboid server and now it's time to add mods. Sadly, Project Zomboid did not make this easy, but we've developed some custom and fully unique tools for Pine hosting that makes this process at least a little bit easier than what it normally would be. So, what you're going to want to do is head over to your Project Zomboid server. So, once you're on your Project Zomboid server, you can head over to the workshop panel over here. And from here, you can install all the mods you want. So the best way to do this is to head over to the Steam browser. So on this page, you can install all the workshop items you'd ever need. The best way to do this is to head over to Steam Community for Project Zomboid and then find the mods you want. So I'm just going to go with this one. From here, the easiest thing to do is to copy the URL and then you can go to install, paste the URL and click install. Give it a few seconds and then it will install that item onto your server. If you want to store multiple items at once, this can be done. You don't also have to use the link. You can use the ID if you want, the full link, or you can use a mixture of both, depending whatever you find easier. So for example, let me install a bunch of mods at once just to show you what that looks like. We'll install all of these. You can separate them by comma or semicolon. And then you can also put the links in here, obviously. After that, just click install. Give it a few seconds and there we go we have 94 workshop mods installed so you'll see next to some of these items it has a little warning icon if you click this it pretty much tells you that you need to restart your server essentially the way project zomboid works is you have to install a mod by adding it to the file and then when you restart the server it actually downloads the mod files from there you can enable the mods you want so the best way to do this is install all the mods then click on it restart your server either through here or the console page wait for them to all install and then you can come through and ensure that they're all installed i've had some of these mods installed before so you can see that they're still added over here now this is where project zomboid gets quite tricky compared to other games most games just let you install the mods and then they work as they are project zomboid forces you to enable the mods within the workshop items if that makes any sense so if you see let's just open auto mechanics here it has a mod within the workshop item called auto mechanics which you can enable and disable if you click enable give it a bit of time because it has to find the things in the file it will then get added to the mods page this is where you can manage all your mods you'll find that some workshop items have multiple mods like in this example over here some of them will allow you to enable all of them for example so it'll add an extra feature or an extra item but some of them you have to pick between two different versions or one might be a patch it can get quite complicated, which is where Project Zomboid differs from a lot of games. The best way to do this is read the descriptions over here. If the developer puts something like, please only enable this one, then obviously you can only enable one at a time. The other good thing to do is to read the actual workshop description. In the bottom, the developers will put the mod IDs a lot of the time and any information you might need. So you have two options when enabling mods. You can either go through this page here and enable them through the pop-up. This can be a little bit slow, but it's the best way to do it if you don't want to go and dig through all the workshop items and find the mod IDs in the descriptions. This is the easiest way to do it. But if you know all the descriptions or you already have a list from friends, for example, you can just head over to the mods page over here. Obviously, it'll have all the ones you've already enabled and you can just click add. So from here, you can put in separated by comma or separated by semicolon, whatever mods you want to enable. So I'm just going to say... We'll add long-standing metal construction. Go back to this page. Let's add another one. Let's just say pine hosting mod two, semicolon, we'll add test mod five. Then you just have to click enable. And there we go, it adds all the mods. Now, another thing, a quirk should we say with Project Zomboid is that the mod load order matters. So the first mod is always loaded first, second, third, fourth, etc. The best way to handle this is loading the most important mods first and then any patches or things that tweak mods that have already loaded should be loaded at the end. This is pretty much just trial and error, to be honest. That's the best way you can handle it. If you ever get stuck, feel free to open a ticket with our support team and we should be able to assist. But with the amount of mods there are, the best way to do it is just mess around, tweak a few things and see what works for you and what doesn't. Oftentimes, if you read the descriptions in the mods, they'll tell you the best way to do things. But if you ever have to adjust the order, for example, let's move this Pine Hosting mod. If you're on desktop, you can just drag and drop it to whatever position you want. If you have quite a few mods, which I know a lot of Project Zomboid servers do, another easy way to handle this is just clicking on the reorder button over here. And you can move this from position 7 to position 2, let's say. And then you can reorder that. If you want to remove any mods for whatever reason, obviously you can just delete them. And if you accidentally delete one, you can restore it like that. But once that's done, let's just delete that and let's move that one over there, for example. Then you can click save and this will apply. Next time you restart the server, all these mods will try and be enabled. Obviously, if you have them installed in the workshop section, they should get enabled without issues. Unless there's any mod loading order problems, which you have to shuffle around the order if that's the case. 
The final thing you can do, obviously, in our workshop installer is to uninstall mods if you ever don't want to use them anymore. This will automatically remove the mod from the install line so it won't get re-downloaded and it also deletes the mod file just to clear up any storage space. I think that covers most of the settings in the Project Zomboid workshop installer. As usual, if you have any questions, feel free to open a support ticket and our team will be happy to assist.